Uh, the, the events that we've seen now, you have an understanding of how things play out. Developing those vaccines has been the really hard work, but the next step isn't going to be all that e easy either. We need to figure out how to safely and effectively distribute the vaccine to millions of Americans. And I know um, CVS is going to be playing a role with that. Aetna is going to be playing a role with that. Where, where do you think we stand? What are the, the challenges that we face? And how do you think this will play out? Great to see you, Becky, Joe, Rod, Andrew. Um, I think the real issue here is um, the vaccine's great. More The more the merrier. Um, I think we need more innovation. Um, and it's been amazing what the pharmaceutical companies have been able to do. But it's one part of an arsenal that really goes back to a broader pandemic framework where we first have to early identify, so get back into who the World Health Organization, get, get active there again, Secondly, have the diagnostic and antibody testing to stratify the population so we know who's immune. And we also know who we need to protect. So that way we can keep America working while we protect Americans that are at risk. And then as the vaccines come along, you need to have the ability to track and trace diagnostics, antibodies, and the vaccines because we don't know yet in any of these vaccines how long the immunity is. And when that immunity wears off, you need to understand when it happens, what kind of booster shot do people need, um, and how do we keep that going over time? So the amount, the enormity of the data and the framework around doing that um, is going to be really important to build. And we don't have that yet, in large part because we don't have a national plan. There, there's a lot of things that we can kind of jump into there, but I, I want to start with one thing you said that we need to figure out who is going to be most affected by this. I mean, I think that's part of the huge question. We know the demographic split, that older people happen to be um, in worse shape with this, that people with comorbidities have a worse time with this. But are we any closer to being able to figure out why some people are so greatly impacted, even if they don't have comorbidities, even if they're younger, while others seem to deal just fine with it? I think we're learning more every day, Becky, um, I'm, and we'll continue to learn. It's going to take a while to get a real deep understanding of this disease and of the vaccine's impact. Um, but I think it's important that as, as long as we have a national framework around this, we can begin to approach all the public health issues, but even more importantly, we can build the capacity models we need to understand in PPE, hospital beds, skill sets, and in uh, ventilators and other things that allow us to have a buffer economy so we're not doing just-in-time responses to pandemics as they emerge. This is not our last pandemic. We'll have more. Mark, we're pretty long in the tooth in this pandemic. At least it sure feels like it if you're sitting at home. Well, why do you think we don't have a, a, a better plan at this point, at least for the testing uh, and, and at least for contact tracing? Because we don't have a framework to do it nationally across the board. We could be learning so much from every part of the country if we had a way of aggregating the information we're understanding and who's sick, why they're sick, um, what kind of antibodies are we seeing out there, what can be used for therapeutics. And as the vaccines develop, how are these vaccines working? Which ones are best for which population? That requires a national database, a national way of looking at this information. And we've decided to allocate it out to the states, and I think that's wrongheaded. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.